Yo, 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 welcome to MTV Cribs. Come on in. Welcome to the bear. The bear took almost a year to make, about 11 and a half months from start to finish. Uh, it was a lot of work. A lot of work. It's platypus or platypostry, uh, leather seats. It's kind of like a fighter jet cockpit up there with all the screens and with the tuner, the GPS, the backup cam. It's a really nice sound system up there. Lots of storage up top. Passenger chair swivels. It's also a recliner. We've got a full size shower right here with a porta potty in it. It's just for emergencies and number ones. The shower head is a Nebbia by Moen and it's extremely efficient, but it still sucks back the water. It is a shower. Behind the shower above the uh, driver's seat is where we have more storage for our shampoos and soaps and stuff like that. There's also our curtain there that's on a flexible track. So we can pull it around to cover up the front windows and still have access to this chair. The kitchen table is removable. Um, we just made this out of stuff we had left over. It's uh, the top is Tennessee cedar. Actually everything in here that looks nice and fancy is Tennessee cedar. And then the roof and a couple other areas are western red cedar. And we left that untreated and it smells wonderful in here. Especially when we're showering and the hot water gets on it. It smells like a cedar sauna in here. The sink is a full size sink. And it's a granite ceramic Krauss sink. It's very nice, very deep. The, uh, well the pump's turned off, but we've got a full size faucet up there. And it works well too. It's, we've got a sprayer on it and a regular regular faucet head. This right here is the uh, hot water on demand thermostat power on etc. And that's actually just in under here. It works extremely extremely well and it barely uses the propane. We're very very surprised at how much propane it actually does use. Um, our stove is a Furion three burner stove and it's an absolute pleasure to cook on. It's got an oven as well so we can do pizzas and muffins and make bread and a wonderful stove and again it doesn't use very much propane. Um, we just filled up the propane we really didn't have to but after a month we were still three quarters or uh, we had a quarter tank left. So, and we're using it every day. Every time we make coffee and we drink a lot of coffee, we have to boil the water for the coffee. Uh, up here is all the storage, dry storage, more dry storage, and then 
plastics and containers and such. Under here, this is our coffee cupboard. We've got all our grinder and presses and pour over stuff in there. Down here is all of our pots. We've only got three pots and that's enough. We find that you bring more than that. We're not even using these. We'll probably downsize some in the coming days. Um, we've got locks in here for all the drawers. So when we're traveling, there's just dowel right here that we just kind of slide into place. And really deep storage on the drawers works very well. There we go. That's all locked up because it's travel day. On the other side here, here's the door. You come in the door and there's storage for sunglasses, hats, electronics, cell phones and whatnot. Um, we have that there because we've got two USB charge ports right here. So we can just put everything up in there. This is our, uh, what is that? The Victron. I don't know. It's the smart shunt and it tells us everything we need to know about the solar incoming, what we're using. We rarely, rarely look at that. Usually everything is done right here. 400 watts, 11 and a half amps, 35 volts. The solar works extremely, extremely well, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this is our closet, more or less. We have hooks here. Our other friend, Matt, forged these at his place in Woodstock. So we put them up there. These are the locks for all the dresser drawers here. And on the top, we've got some more storage. And this Matt forged this for us. So these drawers are, they work very well and they're very deep. You store a lot of clothing in there. It's my underwear drawer. This is usually my shirts, shirts drawer. And then my pants and shorts in here. And I, I brought my robe because mm -hmm. why not? But lots of room, plenty of room. And those just tighten in like that for travel days like today. Um, to the fridge, we've got a full-sized apartment fridge. It's, uh, I believe, eight or nine cubic feet. So on the, we just got a little latch there. On the top, we have the fridge. And it's, it's plenty, it's plenty. We can store a week, a week and a half of food in here, no problem. And we like to eat. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff that necessary, we don't necessarily need, but we like to have. And on the bottom is the freezer. Not a lot going on in there. Some of Maddie's chops and bacon. So the bed comes up. And if you can see in there, you get a clear shot of it. Yep. That is the power center. Um, we've got two lithium batteries that we built and programmed. We just ordered raw cells from China. Um, went online. There is a, a plethora of knowledge online. If you can figure it out, it's it's not as hard as one would think to put those together. Um, each battery is 680 amp hours. So if you know about lithium batteries, that's a lot of power. We've got 1360 amp hours combined. In the back, the little blue box is an Orion charger that's straight from the motor, allows the batteries to charge. Then the solar controller is the next one, and that's the solar on the roof. We have just under 1.5 kilowatts. The next part's the distributor, and then the big one is the inverter, and it's a 3,000 watt inverter. In the back, we've got our water tank, and that's just shy of 70 gallons. I think it's 68.3 gallons, and over in that corner over there, you can't see it because it's covered, but uh, that's where the water pump and everything is. About 
we've got our lights here. They're nice ambient lights at night for cooking and whatnot. And there's a switch on over by the door, a dimmer switch for the lights that run front to back in the bus. But there's also this remote that allows us to operate the lights as well. And this here, if you swing around that, this is our remote wall right here. It's just, we've got all our remotes on Velcro. And uh, we can lay here. This one's for the fans. We've got two Max Air fans. These fans are bloody amazing. It's so nice. We do have an air conditioner, but we find that if we want to set one to suck in and one to blow out, it creates a nice wind tunnel or set them both to suck out of the bus and open up the back window if we're laying in bed and it's just a nice wind tunnel right over us. It's really nice. And that saves us from using the, uh, using the air conditioner quite a bit. The air conditioner is here. That's a mini split. You, you probably already saw the other part is out on the back deck extension. Um, it pulls a lot less than I thought it would, but it's still the biggest draw if we were to, to be running it all the time. We ran, I guess, off and on six hours one day, and we, we only dropped the battery to 78%, so it's pretty efficient, I think. Our fuse box is here, and that's an AC and DC fuse box. Um, it works well. We haven't had any issues. I was very pleased with myself when I wired the whole bus and on the first attempt everything fired up and none of the fuses blew. So I was pretty proud of myself. This here is the um, thermostat for our diesel heater. And, uh, we've got a little diesel heater that's plumbed into the main tank and you won't be able to see it but it's actually underneath the dresser. Our windows we just we created these blinds and we just went to Walmart, bought some blinds, put Reflectix in the middle just to give it some R value and went to the Sally Ann and bought a bunch of used belts, chopped them up and we used the belts as the as the latches and they work they work very well. So then our well my favorite part this whole back area, the bed is a queen size, it's a full queen. I mean, I'm six foot five, and I've got tons of room back here. I can lay lengthwise in the van or in the bus, and it's no problem whatsoever. Um, it's very comfortable. We do get a good night's sleep, and we do enjoy being in here. Um, we've got a sound bar right here, a Bose sound bar, and that hooks up to one of my favorite parts, the TV. Now the whole back area, I was going to say, was designed because we knew we were going to have a TV in here. So we needed to, to make sure that it fit properly. Um, so we built the TV box and then built forward from that. So here's the TV. And I just think that is the cat's ass. It's literally like having a theater in your bedroom. So the TV is a 55 inch OLED TV and uh, it's wonderful. And it was the best picture we've ever seen and it's in our bus. It's nice on the rainy days to have this and just be able to chill out and watch some TV. Yeah. We've got a blanket in there just in case when we're on the road any vibration that it's hitting something soft and not grinding the screen on, uh, on the, the wood. I guess I can show you the outside because there was a lot of work done on the outside. 
So when we purchased the bus, we got it in Halifax, and yeah, I'm sure it had quite the life before we got it. But being Canada, it's it, we have a lot of rust and a lot of salt on the roads. Not to mention in Halifax, just salty air to begin with. So the frame of the bus was actually pretty decent shape, the actual frame. Um, but the bus shell, like the floor studs, I guess you call them, they were extremely rusty and the floor was rotten. So we peeled it out and then we saw how rotten the floor was and peeled the floor out. And we were like, okay, we could work with that. But then we saw how rotten the metal was and like one good bump in the whole shell of the bus would have just went boom. So then we, we kind of got discouraged a little bit, but we pushed on through and, you know, a friend of ours is a welder and he, uh, he offered to help us. So he re-welded every floor piece in there and we beefed it up, made it a bit heavier, put 3 16 tube steel and capped the ends of them so that they couldn't get in and rust all the way through. Um, we built it back up, the floor is insulated, the sides, the roof, everything is insulated extremely, extremely well because we wanna, we wanna be using this in the winter as well. Um, underneath, because, because we had the floor and everything ripped out, we were able to get underneath a lot more access to the frame and we retreated everything, every inch of the frame. We took all the rust off and then painted it with Pour 15, which is a really good rust paint. And if you're getting under there, Matt, like it looks brand new. Not a lick of rust in there. It looks brand spanking new. And it, all the suspension components, every bit of the suspension components and the rotors and the brakes, everything, it's all brand new. It's custom suspension. It's a six inch lift. Box shocks all around. We pulled the original two and a half inch muffler and put a four inch muffler on there just to help the motor breathe a little better. Our spare tire is mounted in the back there. It's a full size spare tire. We bought 3 16 I beam or C channel to build out the back deck. And that's worked out extremely well. Um, we couldn't weld it in place because in Ontario, if you weld to your frame, you won't pass the safety anymore. So we just bolted it through. We painted the entire bus with bed liner and it turned out awesome. It was a lot of work, but it really was worth it. The roof is white because that's done in a product called Henry's Tropicool and it's a, uh, a silicone paint so nothing sticks to it except for dirt. It beads the rain off very well but it gets dirty and looks ugly. The solar racks I built out of aluminum and there's three panels up there and they're 400 and 80 watts or 495 a piece I believe 485 or 495 a piece um, and then in the back area it's open because we plan to put our snowboards and stuff on there we've got an 18 foot awning and it comes off 10 feet so it, it's really nice it opens it up gives us outdoor space even when it's raining I built two storage boxes. This is the first thing that I ever welded in my life, is this storage box. Um, so I've got the second battery for the motor in here. I've got our, our floor jack and just odds and sods. You know, things that we need, some hardware, screws, etc., etc. That just sits on a lock. And then on the other side over here, well, you can see, get the front, the front, all the suspension is brand new. Every portion of it, all Fox shocks, Skyjacker springs. The lift came from a company in California called uh, WeldTech Design. Really nice setup. It added three inches of width. Um, 
with the radius arms that gave us two inches off the caster. It changes the caster on the wheels. The lights are Vantage Optics lights and they are extremely, extremely bright. But we don't drive at night, so it's just, it's good to have them, but we don't use them. Um, the bumper is also from Weldtech Design and it's custom for this, for this vehicle. We put a, a winch in there. We bought the winch on Amazon, 13 and a half thousand pound winch. Hopefully we never have to use it, but we got it. The motor in the bus is a 7.3 diesel and it's um, a 4R100 transmission. If you know anything about them, they're extremely, extremely good motors. You take care of them and they will, they'll last you over a million miles. Not kilometers, miles. There's many, many stories of them just going the distance and the transmissions too. So here are the other storage bins. I won't open them, but our shower is here and our sink is here. So in this storage bin, I've got our plumbing stuff to plug into an RV park or whatever, um, tubing and stuff. But our J, our P traps are in here for the shower and for the sink. So that's where the plumbing is. And then this here, behind here is our propane tank. And it's a horizontal propane tank, 30, 30 pounds. You could probably get a shot of it in through the wheels there. So we decided we would paint the, uh, the rims red. So we bought automotive Endura paint and went to town sanding the old rims because they were old rusty gray. They weren't in bad shape, but they were just, they looked ugly. So we redid the, the, redid the rims. And then with what I had left from the first batch of paint, I started painting the roof racks, the solar racks, and ran out. So we had to buy more paint and finish the solar racks. But the red offset with the front and the rims and the roof is a, a nice contrast to the black. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, in the back on the deck here, I've got a tool chest. And it's got odds and sods in it, wrenches, sockets, screwdrivers, a bunch of electrical stuff, everything that we'd need to, to fix things in a pinch. Um, the air conditioner's in the middle, the condenser portion of it. Our generator is on the other side. We have not even used the generator. After a month, the lowest we've seen our battery drop was 78%. And by the end of the day today, we'll be fully charged again. Um, we keep our bikes on here. Our chairs, a little mat for the front. Up top here, that's the backup camera. And to be honest, it's not very good. It was one of the first things I put in when the bus was completely open. In hindsight, it would have been much better to put it here, right on the bumper. But up there at least I can see if I'm gonna back into anything, but again, it's not, not that great. Well, I guess that about does it. 